This is part two of Johnny Appleseed by Eva Moore. Johnny gets a nickname. All through the wilderness of Ohio, Johnny met pioneers building their homes. Sometimes he met the same pioneers who had stopped at his farm in Fort Pitt. He asked them if they had planted the apple seeds he had given them. Most of the men had been too busy, but sometimes Johnny would see a small apple tree growing near one of the log cabins, and he would be glad. Johnny went deep into the wilderness, and he planted his apple seeds. When the pioneers came to clear the land for homes, they found orchards of little trees already growing. And Johnny was there, taking care of the trees, ready to sell them or give them to the pioneers. Although Johnny looked very strange to the pioneers, they soon found that he was kind and good. What if Johnny is different, they said. He is always ready to help. Johnny helped the men build their log cabins. He helped the women wash clothes and make candles. And when people were sick, he did what he could to make them well. The pioneers, like Johnny, they liked him so much they gave him a nickname. They called him Johnny Appleseed. And they began to talk about this man, this strange man who walked through the woods without a gun. Stories about Johnny Appleseed traveled faster than Johnny himself. One pioneer said that he saw Johnny playing with his bear cubs in the woods, and the mother bear just stood by and watched. Another pioneer said that when a rattlesnake bit Johnny, Johnny did not want anyone to kill it. The snake didn't mean it, Johnny Appleseed said. He didn't know what he was doing. That autumn, Johnny Appleseed went back to Fort Pitt and the cider mill. He came west again with enough seeds to plant many new orchards wherever they were needed. Johnny and the Indians. As Johnny walked into the wilderness, many pairs of eyes looked at him from behind trees. The Indians were watching him. They saw Johnny planting seeds in the earth. They saw deer eat from his hand. They saw birds perch on his shoulder. They saw that he did not carry a gun like other white men. The Indians were a great danger to the pioneers. They hated the white men. The white men took the Indians land and spoiled their hunting grounds. The pioneers hated the Indians. The Indians sometimes made sudden attacks on helpless pioneer families. There were many battles. Men and women and children on both sides were killed, but the Indians would never harm Johnny Appleseed. They thought he had special magic powers like their own medicine man. One day, some Indians stopped Johnny on his way through the woods. They said, come. Johnny followed them to their village. There, the Indians gave Johnny presents of beads and fur skins. They put a feather headdress on his head and they called him brother. They wanted Johnny to live with them in the village. All night, in the light of the campfire, Johnny thanked the Indians for bringing him into their tribe. He told them he would always be their brother, but he said he could not stay in their village. He had important work to do out in the wilderness. Johnny tried to keep peace between his Indian brothers and the pioneers. He was able to stop many battles just by talking to the Indians and then talking to the pioneers. But one day, Johnny heard that an Indian tribe was going to attack a small fort in Mansfield, Ohio. There was no time to talk now, and the fort was too small to protect itself from a big attack. Johnny didn't want to see the pioneers and the Indians fighting. He had a plan. When it was dark, Johnny ran through the wilderness. He knew the Indians would not stop him. He ran 30 miles in five hours. He ran to the fort in Mount Vernon, Ohio, where there were many soldiers. He told them that the Indians were going to attack the fort in Mansfield. He asked them to come with him to protect the fort. By dawn, the soldiers were in Mansfield. The Indians who were going to attack saw them, and they went back to their village. There was no battle. Johnny Appleseed had saved the town. He had saved the Indians, too. More stories about Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed became a wholesome sight in the pioneer settlements. He was always invited to stay in one of the pioneer's log cabins. Sitting by the fire, he would read to the family from his old and worn Bible. Children loved Johnny Appleseed. Wherever he went, children followed him. They begged him to tell them stories, and Johnny loved the children. He liked to tell them stories, and he always had presents of ribbons or a calico cloth for the girls. For 40 years, Johnny traveled through the wilderness. He planted orchards, and he helped other pioneers plant orchards of their own. Johnny always came back to each of the orchards he planted to look after his trees. As years passed, more stories about Johnny were told in the pioneer settlements. 
Everyone knew that Johnny walked barefoot summer or winter. The pioneers liked to tell the story of how someone had once given Johnny a pair of shoes to wear. It was winter and the snow was deep on the ground. Johnny put the shoes on and walked away. The next day, the man who gave him the shoes saw him again, barefoot. Where are your shoes? The man asked him. Johnny told him he had left his shoes with a poor family he met that day. It looked like they needed a good pair of shoes, Johnny said. Everyone knew that Johnny Appleseed was kind to all the animals of the wilderness. They liked to tell the story of how Johnny had found a hollow log to sleep in one winter night. He cleared away the snow at one end of the log and built a fire to keep himself warm. Then he heard a terrible sound from inside the log. He looked and there was a mother bear and her cub. They were using the log for their bed too and they were afraid of Johnny's fire. So Johnny put his fire out. He slept all night in the snow. Goodbye to the Appleseed Man. Johnny Appleseed was getting older. His strong, thin body slowly became weaker and weaker. Now he had to borrow horses to get from orchard to orchard. Riding along on his horse, Johnny could see how much the country had changed since he was a young man. Villages were growing bigger and bigger. All over the countryside, apple orchards were growing. Johnny Appleseed had made his dream come true. When Johnny Appleseed was 71 years old, his orchard planting days were over. Johnny was too old and tired to work in his orchards, but he still liked to visit them. Just make sure someone was taking care of his trees. In 1844, Johnny went to live with a friend named William Worth and his family in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He spent a happy year with them. Then one day, Johnny heard that there was trouble in one of the orchards 25 miles away. Wild cattle had broken through a fence and were stamping down some young trees. He had to do something. So Johnny walked all the way to the orchard and he drove the cattle away. Then he fixed the fence. This was a lot of work for an old man. It was too much work for Johnny Appleseed. When he got home, Johnny felt very tired. The family put him to bed, but Johnny wanted to be outdoors, so they moved his bed outside and put it under the apple tree he had planted in the backyard years ago. It was almost spring and the apple blossoms were just beginning to show on the tree. Johnny rested under the apple tree all afternoon. When the sun went down in the sky that night, Johnny Appleseed was dead. Everyone was sad to hear that Appleseed Man was dead. They were great for, grateful for all Johnny Appleseed had done for them, and they never forgot him. Every spring when the apple trees began to bloom, people remembered Johnny Appleseed, and they remembered him when the trees grew heavy with fruit in the fall. The apple trees Johnny had planted were valuable. Apples became an important crop, and the beauty of the trees made everyone happy. But most important, the people had come to love Johnny Appleseed as their friend. They liked to tell their children about Johnny Appleseed, and when these children grew up, they told their children and their grandchildren. Today, we still tell stories about the man who walked through the wilderness planting trees, the man called Johnny Appleseed. Dear girls and boys, Johnny Appleseed was a real person. His real name was John Chapman. He was born in Leominster, Massachusetts in 1775, the year the American Revolutionary War began. He died in Indiana in 1845, about 25, 20 years before Abraham Lincoln became president. The pioneers loved Johnny and they liked to talk about him. They talked about his strange ways and his strange clothes. They told wonderful stories about Johnny Appleseed, stories they thought could have happened because Johnny was such a wonderful person. Now, when we try to write a biography about Johnny Appleseed, it is hard to tell what stories happened really and what ones happened maybe. Everybody has his own favorite stories about Johnny Appleseed. Many people like to think that every apple tree they see was planted by Johnny Appleseed. Some people say that Johnny planted trees all over the country. Some people say he planted trees only in Ohio and Indiana. Some people say that Johnny Appleseed played a fiddle and made up poems. It doesn't matter if all the stories people tell really happened or not. The important thing is that Johnny Appleseed did live and that he cared. He cared about apple trees and he cared about animals and he cared about people. To Johnny, every living thing was something to care about. That is why people loved him and it is the reason we still remember him today. Evermore.